Be cool, bro. Be cool. Hi, and welcome to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube channel. My name's Ford from Son of a Stitch. Returning to keep an eye on me this week is my supervisor, Nugget the Parakeet, to help me present part two of my two part series on backstitch. Here at Caterpillar Cross Stitch, we are all about cross stitch, and we upload helpful and, with any luck, entertaining, but if they're not that, at least they're cute, videos about it every single week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our videos. And if you like this particular video, give it a comment and give it a like so I know to make more content like it. Likewise, if there's a topic you'd like to see me discuss on the channel in future, put that in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can get around to it. Nugget just reminded me that I need to make sure to let you know that you should join the Caterpillar Cross Stitch VIP Stitch Club. When you join, you get 10% off your first order, you get an ebook with eight free digital cross stitch patterns in it, and you get a download containing our top 10 cross stitching tips. So make sure you hit the link down there in the description so you don't miss any of those amazing perks. Now, last week I shared some of my mo. This is my time, Nugget. Now, last week I shared some of my more basic cross stitching techniques and tips. This week I'm going to show some of the more advanced techniques that I like to use. Uh, I'm going to start by answering a question that somebody asked in the comments of last week's video, which is how you finish off a, th a backstitching thread when there aren't any stitches nearby to tuck it behind. So let's start with that, and then I'll show you some of my other advanced techniques. So Scrappy's going to help us out again here. This is where we left off after the last video when I was showing how to do the running stitch that uses a lot less floss. But you can see that that leaves us without any really stitches on the back to stitch under. So what I'm going to do is the same technique that I showed you in the video about confetti stitches. I'm going to stick my needle through the weave of the fabric. I'm going to split the weave of that fabric. Now, since there's not much to attach to, I'm going to do it again in the same direction so that my floss is making a full 360 degree loop wrapping around that little piece of weave. So that's going to leave us with a very high friction point right here. And then I just want to tuck my tail in so that it can be nice and tidy. But I'm going to run back in the exact same direction that I was coming from so that if my tucks here are visible at all, they'll be hidden by the line of backstitch that I was creating in the process. So I just pull that nice and tight and I get my scissors right up against the last little bit of the weave and snip it off. And there you have it. I've ended that backstitch line without anything showing and it's a nice sturdy line as well so it's not going to come untucked. So next I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can kind of customize the way your backstitch looks. If you're stitching over the top of existing full cross stitches, doing them one stitch in length at a time, which I'll show you in just a moment, can make the stitches kind of sink down in. Now that can be good or bad depending on one, whether you want those lines to really stand out or to be a little bit more subtle. But if you do them in slightly longer stitches, like four stitches long the way I'm doing these ones here, then they'll tend to more float across the surface of the stitches. So they'll be more highly visible when you're doing backstitch across the top of existing stitches instead of around the outside of them to make an edge or a border. And I'm gonna do a line here of them only one stitch long so you can kind of see how that looks different. But I'm gonna do that in high speed. So you can see here how the longer stitches give kind of a straighter, more cohesive line look as compared to looking like a bunch of little dashes strung together the way it is when you do them only one square at a time. Now, another way that you can customize the backstitch on a line and make it even stronger is instead of the one strand that most patterns will call for, and as I said before, generally if the pattern does not ask for a specific number of strands, you're using one strand for the back stitching. But you can customize that a little bit by using two strands instead. Here I'm starting my two strands using the loop start method that I showed you in the last video. And then I'm gonna bring that around to the front and I'll do a couple of stitches with just two strands and then I'll show you a neat little trick that I like to use. So if you wanna use two strands in order to get a heavier line, one thing that I like to do is to take my two strands once I've got my floss on the surface of my fabric and wrap them around one another. This is not just twisting, I'm actually changing hands and switching them back and forth, so kind of like braiding but with only two strands, and I wrap them around one another to cord them into a single 
double thick strand of floss. Part of the problem can be when using two strands that the, they will split a little bit and look like two lines instead of one. So I'm just going to wrap these a little bit. While I do, I want to highly recommend you, you join the Caterpillar Cross Stitch Facebook group and subscribe to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch Instagram. There's a really fantastic community around both of those. Tons and tons of stitchers with years and years of experience who can answer questions and give project ideas and show finishing options and that kind of stuff. It's an excellent and very supportive community and I recommend it highly. So once I do these stitches with the two strands that I have corded together instead of with just two strands running parallel, you can see that it looks a little bit more like just a solid line as opposed to two lines together. And especially when it's been worked and fiddled with a little bit, the two strands in a double strand backstitch will often come apart. So this gives a tidier but bolder backstitch line look and I really enjoy the effect. Next one I'm going to show you is a technique that's called couching. Um, and this is a very easy and fast way to do line stitches that are going to outline the pattern. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my entire stitch of the length that I need to go all at once. Now after doing that you can either just park that by wrapping around a needle minder or tie it off, but you wouldn't want to leave it this way because you can see that it wiggles around. Especially after you wash it that's going to be a problem. So I'm using two different colors of floss so you can see what I'm doing, um, but normally you use the same color and in fact I'd use two ends of the same strand. I'd use the loop start method that I showed you earlier and that I showed you in yesterday's or in last week's video. So then at regular intervals all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my secondary strand of floss bring it up through the surface of the fabric, go around my straight line stitch, and then just go back down through the exact same location in the fabric. This allows me to just anchor that in place. It's pretty much the same way a sewing machine works, except that I'm not pulling it all the way through, I'm leaving it on the surface. So the nice thing about this is if you're trying to follow a particular curve or describe a particular shape with the floss, instead of coming up in a line with it, you can actually come up a little bit aside from it and you can pull that line stitch over to where you need it to be and describe the shape that you need it to. So I'm going to bring that under here if I can get my fingers to work correctly and I can just pull that stitch over to where I need it to be so I can get it to describe whatever shape I need to. The more detailed I need the curve to be the more anchoring points that I would use but you can see that's very easy no mas no fas. And the final thing that I want to show you has to do with how to do backstitching that makes up blackwork or Algerian eyes or other kind of non-standard stitches that use a bunch of individual lines to make up a fill area. So this particular stitch that I'm doing right here is known as an Algerian eye. And it's basically a double-sized cross stitch that also has a double-sized plus stitch in the middle of it. So it gives you this kind of asterisk look here. And you'll find this or other very similar configurations in a lot of blackwork patterns. But when you do it the way I've just shown you, where you just go all the way across, even though it's a decent length, I get kind of this unseemly pile of thread in the middle because I've got four strands of floss all stacked up on top of each other. And with some blackwork patterns, I'll have even more. A few of my own designs have like eight strands that stack on top of each other and it gets kind of messy. So what I prefer to do is when I've got a bunch of strands crossing each other like that, I will do all the stitches up to the point where they intersect and then I will go down through the fabric there and go over and do the next stitch. So I'm actually doing each of these stitches only really about half as long as they appear to be and then I will leave one full length line undone. And so then when I get around to having finished the rest of the stitch I'll do that one last length one all the way across covering up the hole in the middle. So it'll lay nice and flat because it doesn't have a stack of thread underneath it, but it'll look extra super tidy uh, because it covers up that hole that's been gone through a whole bunch of times so you don't get a dark spot there in the middle, which looks super nice. Now that should cover... <laughs> well, that about does it for the knowledge that I have to share as far as backstitching. At least that's everything I can think of right now. Do you have anything, Nugget? Well then I guess that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For Caterpillar Cross Stitch, my name is Ford and I will see you next time. Hi, 
have you heard about Love It Stitch It yet? You can design and shop the cross stitch patterns you've always wanted. Love It Stitch It is an easy to use design tool and exclusive cross stitch marketplace, giving you the freedom to create, sell and shop all in one place. You can design anything that you like, add text, upload and convert pictures and artwork. You can design the cross stitch patterns of your dream. You can download them for personal use or you can upload them onto the marketplace designed by cross stitchers for cross stitchers jam-packed with some gorgeous cross stitch patterns from designers all over the world if you're not interested in designing or selling that's totally fine too just visit the marketplace and you can shop from hundreds of beautiful cross stitch patterns so you can pick your next project are you already a cross stitch designer but maybe you're fed up of other marketplaces maybe not getting the sales that you deserve, maybe not getting your patterns seen as much as you'd like, then let us help. You can easily register for free and get uploading your PDF patterns with absolutely no fees whatsoever. Let us then market your gorgeous designs that you've put all of your work into to over 185,000 dedicated cross stitchers from all over the world. We will absolutely do our best to get your patterns seen and into the right hands of people that we know will absolutely love stitching them. As a designer, you can easily list your PDF patterns for sale, no matter which software you use to design them. Our job is to make cross stitch design accessible to all. There's nothing to upgrade, there's nothing to download. It's really easy to use and beginner friendly. We also wanted to create the marketplace to bring sellers and buyers together so that it's really easy and such an enjoyable experience to shop all of the high quality verified designs on the platform, but also to give those amazing designers a place to really showcase their creativity. So visit loveitstitchit.com today and register for free. Stitch what you love and free your creativity.